Thank you. Everybody can be seated for a minute. We're going to start this evening's program with the Pledge of Allegiance by two of our grads, Michael Johnson and Audrey Zaramba. If you would all join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Community Choir sing at our graduation. Well, this year, we have a real special treat for you. The choir tonight goes by the name of Murph Tones. It was started by a small group of students at Central High who happened to be in the same English class, that of Mrs. Murphy, and they loved to sing together at the end of each class. Hence the name Murph Tones. The song was written by Mrs. Murphy and her students, and the music was composed by our own Max Reed. I am proud to introduce to you their first public appearance, Central High Murph Tone, Kayla Phillips, Max Reed, and Monica McRae. Thank you. 
awesome, wouldn't you say? And they wanted to do it on their own. There was their own determination. They came up with the idea and they practiced and practiced with the help of Miss Lindsay. I got to give it up for them. If you haven't gathered by now, Farmington Community School, both the adult ed and Farmington Central, it's a family, and we all work together. And what we said, we're kind of crossing new boundaries, having kids say the Pledge of Allegiance, having kids come in and sing, but that's what we're all about. We're here to help each other and support each other in our good days and bad. So we're very proud of what they've accomplished, and that's why you might see things a little bit different than a real formal graduation, but it still means the same thing. The next person I'd like to introduce and give a few words is going to be our superintendent, Susan Rollick. of so many people that have contributed to this. The Farmington Board of Education, who is represented by Mr. Frank Reed, President of the Board, who is on the stage with me. The faculty, of course, of Farmington Community School and Farmington Central High School. All the families and friends, and of course, the graduating class themselves. Um, it's terrific to, to see everybody here tonight to celebrate this. I also want to recognize several other people who have joined me on stage uh, tonight. And of course, you, Pat, you didn't introduce yourself, but of course we all want to recognize Mrs. Pat Karras, who's Director of Adult and Community Education for the district. <laughs> Fabulous leader. I know sitting, I, she's sitting down right below, right somewhere, is uh, Mrs. Terry Haas, the Principal of the Department of Central Program. I want to thank her. And on stage, Dr. Katherine Koch, our Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Services. And uh, Mr. Mark Wilson, Executive Director for Instructional Services. All of these individuals are committed to the success of each and every one of our students. So tonight, we celebrate the fact that 62 men and women have completed the requirements for the Farmington Public Schools High School Diploma. To the graduates. <laughs> to the graduates. What does this mean as you graduate from high school and make this transition into adulthood? As you go on to college or other post-secondary experience, much of what you do now will be your own choosing. And the choices you make, your friends, the people with whom you work, but those with whom you choose to love can all have a profound influence on your life. Understand, of course, you will have setbacks, and you'll make some poor choices, and you'll make some mistakes. But it's the way that you respond to these inevitable brick walls that makes the difference between living an ordinary life or one that fulfills your dreams and makes the impossible possible. I want to share with you the story of Bill Strickland, who, uh, like many of the students here tonight, was at one time a very disengaged and very disaffected teenager, uh, until one day one of his high school teachers changed his life. Now, you probably don't recognize the name Bill Strickland. It's not like he's a famous professional athlete or, you know, Bill Gates or, and all of that. 
But Bill Strickland is a uh, very successful uh, CEO in his own right. Uh, for the past 30 years, he um, has led a, a, a nonprofit company called Manchester Bidwell, which has literally transformed thousands of people's lives. Uh, in fact, Manchester Bidwell is one of the far foremost job training centers and community arts programs in the world. Uh, <clears throat> It is located in a poor inner city neighborhood in Pittsburgh, about four blocks from where Bill Strickland actually grew up. Now today, this man works with corporations, community leaders, of course the, the Pittsburgh public schools, to give disadvantaged kids and adults the tools they need for a brighter future. But that's not where it started, as I said. And that's what really makes his story so powerful and inspirational. Uh, he has written a book, in fact, it's called Making the Impossible Possible. And I want to read a short passage from that book to you. In this passage, he has been invited to address the graduating class at Harvard for the, for their, the business school graduating class after receiving the what's called MacArthur Genius in Business Award. And he said this, I was 19 years old in 1968 when I founded Manchester Craftsman's Guild a tiny neighborhood arts center that grew into Manchester Bidwell. Our first home was a derelict row house on Buena Vista Street in Manchester. My plan was to use the space as a studio where I could teach neighborhood kids to make bowls and pots. I was a neophyte potter myself at the time, and making pottery was one of the great joys of my life. A high school art teacher had turned me on to the craft and has been my hero ever since. I was just another 19-year-old kid, aimless, coasting through school, bored and disengaged, with no sense of life of what I wanted to do after graduation, until this teacher invited me into his classroom and let me sit at the potter's wheel. The magic I felt when I first laid my hands on wet clay gave me um, gave me the belief that I could do something interesting with my life. It opened up doors for, to me and possibilities for the first time that I had talents and I had capabilities no one had seen before and that I had never dreamed of. I'm convinced that those insights not only gave me vision of my future, but literally saved my life. And he goes on to say, in 1968, and this could have been anywhere, it could have been in Detroit, it could be anywhere in the world, but in a poor urban neighborhood that was suffering from racial strife, that rocked at the time so many inner city neighborhoods across the country following the wake of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Homes were in flames, there were riot cops and armed National Guards troops patrolled the streets. There were shootings and frequent clashes between demonstrators and police. And in the middle of all of this were a lot of terrified kids, wondering if someone was going to shoot them or set their house on fire. So Bill Strickland said, I wanted to do something for those kids, but I had no experience as a social worker, a teacher, or community activist. I was a know-nothing freshman at the time, living at the, in the University of Pittsburgh, trying my best to keep from flunking out and to get my life in order. All I knew was clay and what it had done for me. Intuitively, I knew it could do the same for them. I knew what they needed, a safe, sane, quiet environment where they could escape the madness that reigned in the streets, work on some clay, find a way to shape something personal and beautiful, and spend some time in a bright, clean, nurturing place where it did not seem pointless to dream. With the help of the local churches, I was able to secure a ramsackle row house, which I cleaned and I painted, and then I furnished with potter's wheels and stocked with clay. So what are some of Bill Strickland's beliefs about what made the impossible possible for him and for so many thousands of people? First of all, he says this, people are born into this world as assets, not liabilities. It's all in the way we treat people, including ourselves, that determine a person's outcome in life. <coughs> Number two, listen to this one, graduates. The sand in the hourglass flows only one way. 
Stop going through the motions of living. You need to savor each and every day. Because life is here and now. It's not something waiting for you in the future. You need to make the most of it right now. And thirdly, you don't need to travel very far to change your own life and change the way you're living. You only need to change your thinking to remake your world. So let me conclude then with Bill Strickland's own words about what it takes to lead a successful life. And he said this about himself, again, to these Harvard graduates. Many people immediately size me up as a guru type, an urban do-gooder who has devoted his life to selflessly helping the poor. In fact, I have dedicated my life to helping people, and I'm proud of what I've accomplished along those lines. But you can't really understand me or what my life has been about unless you grasp the fact I didn't do any of it out of selflessness. I did it to be myself. I did it to enrich my own life, to deepen the quality and meaning of my own experience. I did it because it was a part of what I had to do if I genuinely wanted to be me. If the MacArthur people are right, if I have even a small shred of genius in my soul, it's only because I have an unshakable belief that each of us has not only the potential to live a rewarding and purposeful life, but also the responsibility to do so. It's an obligation we all share as human beings, but it's also the source of our greatest potential. Owning up to that obligation not only makes us more human, it also connects us to the bottomless reserves of passion, vision, conviction, and commitment that I believe are present in abundance in every human heart, and that are, and, and are the fuel for genuine and deeply fulfilling success. So in closing, to the graduates, these are really difficult economic times in which you're graduating, but they're also times of great opportunity. Follow your passions. Don't give up on your dreams. If you always work hard on something that ignites your passion, just like Bill Strickland, you can change the world around you for the better and change your world at the same time. Graduates, you have been well served by your families, your school, and your community. Have courage and find a way, find a path to make them possible, possible for yourself and for others. And I know you will do great things. Best wishes and congratulations to the Farmington Central and Adult Education High School class. Thank you, Sue. And I also want to thank Sue and our school board and central office staff for believing in our students, believing in our staff, and believing in our program. And to the parents for giving us the opportunity to watch your students grow, to teach them, and to see them succeed. Now to the class of 2010. You, thanks. you have all come so far from those nervous freshmen to tonight, your high school graduation. Although high school provided challenges, you overcame them with the help of your family, friends, and teachers. Make no mistake, your teachers have learned as much from you as you've learned from them. I want to take a minute to ask you, the class of 2010, to help me recognize your teachers for their help in getting you here. So would the staff from Farmington Community Adult Ed please stand? Now, with the staff from Farmington Central High School, please stand. If Terry would remain standing, students, we want to thank Mrs. Haas for the great year.
her constant, her constant dedication to our school and to our students. Special thanks also go out to my support staff, Mary, Kathy, Sandy, Fran, and Karen, who made sure everything tonight went smoothly. of 2010, as you sit amongst your classmates today, I ask that you look at each one of them and imagine the difficult struggles that they had to overcome so that they could be sitting next to you here tonight. When you reflect upon the trials and tribulations through which your own personal obstacles were pushed aside, you know you are not alone. All of you experience unique challenges, joys, triumphs, and tragedies. But you rallied around each other, and you succeeded. You have taken stride in everything that has been thrown at you, and you made it. You made it to all your plus classes? Okay, well, most of them. You got through the MME, the ACT, the finals, the acting in Miss Lucy's class, the dissecting of pigs in Miss Stuckey's class, the think sheets, and the visits to Mrs. Haas's office. You guys persevered. Keep those memories that you made here stored in a safe place so that whenever you feel overwhelmed, you can go back to those memories and smile. Now is the time to take a step forward and walk on the new path of life, the path that is opening up to you. You are not only graduating from high school, you are graduating from one step of life into another. The future beckons you with all its hidden surprises and you must take it up with an ambitious heart and an adventurous soul. Life does not promise to be easygoing. However, you guys already know that. So keep the determination that you exhibited to graduate to get you to your next journey. Continue to climb up the ladder of life and embark each and every day with all your heart, just like you did here. I applaud your efforts and wish all of you continued success and happiness. Thank you for giving us the chance to learn and grow with all of you. In closing, I want to give you yet one more challenge before you leave tonight, and that is <coughs> discover who you are and what you stand for, and then stand firm and those convictions. Find your own path, chart your own courses, and make your own mark wherever you go. Congratulations to the class of 2010. Now I'd like to introduce the president of our school board, Mr. Frank Reed. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Education, I bring greetings to the Farmington Central High School and Adult Education Class of 2010. I'm sure that you realize, as I did when I was on the other side of the podium, that your graduation marks a major milestone in your life, but not only for you, but also for those who have provided the light, love and support that you've received throughout your life and are here in the auditorium right now. So please join me in thanking and honoring the parents, step-parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, guardians, and foster parents who have been important in your lives with a public thank you. Now some of the parents here today are attending a high school graduation for the last time as their youngest child is graduating. You know we must have mixed feelings at this time. 
and we thank you for the support of your children and the entire district. Would the parents of those youngest child is graduating please stand up and be recognized. I stand with you this year. To the graduates, I'm certain that you feel the same satisfaction that I felt as I sat among my classmates, friends who have been a part of the important moments of our school experience. You are being celebrated today by those who wish you all the best in building a life in the world beyond high school. This is huge. Let me start with a parable. Two young fish are swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys! How's the water? <laughs> the younger fish acknowledge their elder in whatever way fish do. You know. And the two younger fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks at the other and says, What the heck is water? Now, one of the realities of graduating from high school is that you are now embarking on a journey to discover your water. To discover what about yourself in this big world that you don't know that you don't know. This sounds a bit paradoxical, but it is part of the process that happens to us when we go from being children, largely focused on our own needs, and shift to maturity when we start to see other people in the greater world as needing some of our attention. Our attention. Pay attention. Did you ever hear that before? I did. What you're really giving up when you pay attention is shutting off your natural internal dialogue that places us as the center of the universe and instead places us in a mode to receive new information and to understand that there are other people in this world who are worthy of our attention. This is the actual process of maturity. And oh, by the way, please pay attention to the invisible people in your world. There are a multitude of people who do jobs that make success in this world possible. Waiters, waitresses, hotel maids, janitors, custodians, clerks, bus drivers, a whole lot of different kind of jobs. But it's easy to assume that your life is important and theirs is not. Many times, though, their stories are vastly more compelling and consequential than you might imagine. And you will be very, very well served by paying them the attention and respect that you would automatically extend to someone who has attained a more high-profile role in life. I have found this to be a particularly important lesson in my own life. Remember that our default is to look within, and really paying attention is looking outward with real energy and focus. In closing, when we graduate from high school, we believe that we know something, and indeed we do. But is it sufficient knowledge to accomplish something meaningful to the greater world? Probably not. The question that we need to ask ourselves when we get to graduation is, what do I need to know? What skills do I need to acquire in order to make a difference in this world? Our goal in the world of kindergarten to 12th grade is to, to get you ready to ask that important question, to get you to the step of realizing that there is water. You need to put the next pieces together to establish how it is you will leave your mark on this world. And the part that will really surprise you is the time available to accomplish this is really very short. It looks long now to you, but in reality, when you look back, it's just a blink of your eye. I can tell you that your parents are feeling this perspective in a big way about you right now. They thought you'd be cute and small and cuddly a lot longer than you turned out to be. So enough about parables and advice. Let me turn now to something you very much want to hear. That on behalf of the Board of Education and the entire Farmington School District, by the powers vested in me, I hereby declare the class of 2010 of Farmington Central High School and adult education to be officially graduated. Ms. Haas is going to be speaking. I'm trying to be polite. 
to the class of 2010. I hope you live your life with no regrets, with no what ifs, and only fulfilled dreams. I hope you have only I tried my best, and most importantly, I'm worth it. To Farmington Community School graduates, some of you entered with only one class that you needed, some of you needed a little more. Now you leave with memories of Mrs. Rice and the computer lab, with E2020 with Mr. Canfield or Mr. Bate, Mr. Colbert's lectures, and Mr. Sutherland's science terms. You leave with memories with Mr. Cussey always making sure you got the class on time, and Mrs. Primo double checking your credits constantly. However, the best memory you have of Farmington Community School is that it is a community, and with one goal in mind, to graduate. To Farmington Central grads, it's up to you now. Your parents and staff have given you the base, now you have to build on it. Graduates, you have shined at Central. When you first started here, 6% of you participated in extracurricular activities at your feeder schools. Now, 42% of you are in extracurricular activities. It's also well documented that students achieve more with parent participation in their school. This year, our conferences, the attendance rose 18% more than last year. And 47% of our parents participated on average at every conference. And parents don't think for a moment that they didn't appreciate you coming to the conferences. It's just that sometimes they show it a little different than others. Graduates, the staff will no longer be in constant contact with your parents. No longer will you hear, Tom, Mrs. Champagne doesn't want to call your dad again, but she will. <laughs> Brianna, Scott, please finish your E2020, and Mrs. Cadwell doesn't want to stay up all night. Mario, I just love emailing your mom. We have the best conversation. <laughs> Travis, your mom volunteered for another outing. It's so lucky that you can find with her all the time. <laughs> Class of 2009, you're living with memories of Miss Malozik organizing the Valentines for the soldiers in Iraq. Who knew, Katie, you could have such heartfelt thoughts when you sent them to the soldiers? And then, of course, we have Mrs. Kovic, our dear math teacher. And every trimester this year, she had an active third hour. It didn't matter who was in there, but it was active. And who knew that Mrs. Murphy and her Murph tones could be so good? Um, Mrs. Primo tackling you to get your hats. It was interesting. Joe came to get his cap and gown. He said, I made sure to take off my hat, even though you had already fulfilled your graduation requirements. Mr. McNiff and his recycling team, because of such students of Max and Scott, there's one less landfill. And finally, Miss and Lucy and her acting class can only be defined as controlled chaos. Andy and Mrs. Stuckey bonding over science and music. Who knew those two topics could intertwine? Cassie, we don't know how you can walk in your heels. Monica and Audrey, are you always together? Jeff, we're, we're sorry you missed the luncheon, but we're glad you're here tonight, safe and sound. Then we had, we had an accident before our luncheon. And we don't forget the plus announcements. Boys, because of the graffiti in the bathroom, you're losing your privileges for two weeks, and then in two weeks, boys, you can have them back. And finally, the common plus <coughs> announcement, watch yourself at lunch, the neighbors called again. <laughs> <laughs> you are just. Seniors, you now have the recipe for success. You earned your diploma. You earned your self-respect. And you earned the right to go forward and make a change. Congratulations to the class of 2010.
now a job and waiting for. I'm going to invite Mr. Reed up here, the president of our school board, to help with the passing out of the diplomas. We're going to start with community school first. Summer Marie Barnhouse. <laughs> Joshua Ressler. <laughs> Shannon M. Cockfield. <laughs> Jason Christopher Holtwit. <laughs> Travisha M. Dixon. Sonia Matthews, <laughs> Jessica Marie Miller, <laughs> Christopher Miles, <laughs> Tina Ventura, <laughs> Rachel Christine. Warren Colvich, David or John David Watson, and our last graduate is Sierra Whittle. Justin Randall Bonner. Cassie Francine Carpenter. Kyle Cherry. Tom Didabukai. Caitlin Jane Irwin.
Sydney Marie Provencial. Eric Adam Reed. Maxwell C. Green. Gerald Scarver. Scott Edward Shaw. Amanda Michelle Trout. Jeffrey Lee Wilhoff. Travis Gordon. Audrey Marie Zaramba. Congratulations to the class of 
I'm happy to say I proved myself wrong. <laughs> Central High, I have Tasha Pearson. Hello everybody, my name is Natasha Pearson and I am proud to deliver the commencement speech for Franklin Central High School. I'm the best public speaker, so please bear with me. I would like to start off by welcoming a few people that are here with us tonight. The superintendent, Mrs. Sue Cervales, school board members, central office staff, our own Farmington Central staff, our friends and family, and most importantly, the 2010 graduating class of Farmington Central. I would like to start off with two quotes. This one is by Michael Jordan. Obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. The second quote is by Thomas Carlyle. The block of granite, which was an obstacle in the pathway of the weak, becomes a stepping stone for the pathway, in the pathway of the strong. I feel like these quotes define many of our educational paths. When life throws you something hard to deal with, you can't just give up. You have to work to overcome any obstacles or difficulties that come to you. In the past, I not only hated school, I never went. The large amount of people and not having the one-on-one -on -one with teachers made me uncomfortable. Central was my fourth school, but the first one that I felt comfortable in. After arriving at Central within the first few days, I knew that this school was the right choice. I knew that I'd be able to grow and succeed. This school has such a unique environment that helps us all grow in our own ways. I know that if it wasn't for Central, I would not be standing here in front of you graduating. I am now going on to college where I will attend Schoolcraft for the Culinary and Pastry Arts Program. I know that... I know that the students who attend this school know how much it really means. It's hard to explain to others what Central is really about. You can't put a place like this into words. It's close to impossible. The teachers here push you to your absolute best. Ms. Stuckey, I remember walking into my first science class at Central and actually understanding what you were talking about. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Lucy, you always kept us going with your words of love and the phone calls we would get if we weren't there. Thank you. Mrs. Cadwell, you are the multitasker. You have done everything from softball stars in the school store. We would all stuff ourselves with hot Cheetos in Arizona. Thank you, Mr. McNeff, for making history not such a bad class. Mrs. Kovac, you are the loving and thoughtful math teacher who we all care about. She is also retiring this year, so let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Ms. Malozic, you are always creative in thinking up new ideas and receiving tons of valentines. Mrs. Murphy, here's to you always looking gorgeous with your great style. Thank you, Mrs. Primo, for always keeping everything organized and in place. And thank you, Mrs. Champagne, for always keeping our eye on the prize, so to speak. And last, but certainly not least, thank you, Mrs. Haas, for always being like a loving mother to us. It's been a long journey getting here, but we finally made it to the end of our high school careers. 
Now we get to go into the real world. We get to pay our own bills, buy our own groceries, and do our own laundry. Exciting, right? <laughs> the end of this chapter leads to a bigger and better one with more excitement. Throughout the years, we will face many, many difficulties as we attend school, take on jobs, or any other things we will go on to do. But we need to remember that giving up is never an option. All we need to remember are the values and lessons we learned at Central. We need to remember the friendship we shared, the commitment we have, and the leadership and worth ethics we learned. I would like to end with this quote by Albert Einstein. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. We all, con we all contribute something great and something priceless to society. We are now adults. Now that we have walked across this stage, life is our choice. No one will be there to make decisions for us. My hope for us is that we continue to grow, learn, and accomplish with our goals. Thank you, graduating class of 2010. We have one more thing on the program. Again, as we said, we always like to do something a little bit different. Thanks to Ms. Murphy and Mrs. Stuckey, they put together a video that kind of captures the whole year for Central High School students, but it's something to show it, these kind of things still go on in our night program, too. It's a feeling of, of acceptance and understanding. So if you want to just sit back, enjoy the video, and we're almost there. Lights, please. Thank you.